Hi everybody, I hope you're doing incredibly well. Apologies for the camera quality in this segment. As you can tell from the title, it's all about the iGen and loneliness. A very short summary of how we got here. I was really intrigued and interested in learning and understanding more about loneliness and the impacts it's having on a variety of people from a variety of places. Through multiple statistical studies I encountered, one thing that I did notice was that young people between 16 and 24 were dealing with loneliness in some cases a lot more than those who are in the elderly category. Me being me, I wanted to hear more from people around my age who have also dealt with loneliness to some degree. And so conjuring a series of questions, I decided to go ahead and ask some of my friends if they would like to answer these questions publicly in hopes that myself and also you two can have a bigger picture of loneliness within the context of young people. You're also going to be seeing my face in this video. That is simply because I will be representing another one of my friends, Christina, who really wanted to partake in this, but is a little camera shy. She still took the time though to thoughtfully write out her answers and so I'm going to be sharing them with you. Thank you so 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 much to all of the participants in this video. I am truly and greatly thankful that you guys said yes. Thank you so much for sharing something so vulnerable and for being open and honest. Mentally because I've been frustrated, annoyed, bored, sad, but also really happy to be with my family and get some alone time. Physically because I play basketball and lockdown was not helping me train properly. The best I could do was probably just run outside and do a few exercises. I had to amend the exercises because of the pandemic. It was just a very stressful time. It actually taught me how to be more appreciative for simple things like going to school or just being around other people. On the other hand, it taught me, or it showed me how ungrateful I was whenever I did have those things. I wasn't able to see my relatives, that was the worst part. And then obviously, to know that many projects that we were going to do, uh, uh, we can't because of the fact of the pandemic. Lockdown has impacted me both positively and negatively. Positively because I've been cooking more and I've been doing more of domestic work, which is essential for life. And also, I have had time to follow up with the news and see what's going on around the world. And it keeps me more informed about political issues and problems that has been going on around the world. Negatively because when I am confined in the house for long periods of time, it brings negative thoughts and frustration to me, which puts me in a depressive mode. And I'm not able to do the things that I would have done, such as go to the movies, go out to eat, go to the mall. I would say that lockdown has impacted me in a positive way as it has enabled me to work on my time management skills and it has also allowed me to dig deeper into improving my well-being whether it's physically or mentally. I'm generally more of an extroverted person so it's affected me a lot. I used to like to you know go out, hang out with friends, go places and do stuff but when everything's closed you can't go inside anywhere. A lot of fun activities and stuff have been canceled. It kind of makes you more of an introvert. And if you still have those extroverted tendencies and want to go out and try to do stuff still, you're considered dangerous and not following the law. It kind of affects you and makes you feel like you don't know what to do with your personality anymore. Lockdown was a very challenging time for me due to the sudden change in both routine and environment. It changed my mindset towards friendships and social media, how to gauge importance and management between the two. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, especially now, since I'm doing my classes online. At least in my school, they gave us the option if we wanted to go back to school or if we wanted to do it virtually. And of course, lots of my friends decided to go back and I'm still doing my all of my schooling online. Um, actually, in one of my classes, I'm the only person on Zoom. So of course, sometimes I feel just isolated or just alone. Maybe a couple of times, 
but I did more at the start of the school year because it was a new school for me. I wasn't used to it, especially being a British girl at an American school. It was definitely very strange for me and I did feel very lonely at the start. I did feel lonely in some way, but I wasn't really like, really, really, I wouldn't say lonely, total lonely. Yeah, there are days where one is better and there's days where one has humor, they where you don't have humor, but it is normal. There are always people around me. Uh, so that's the reason why I don't really, really feel lonely. No, because after a while you kind of get adjusted and recently I have been adjusted to my inbound routine. Yes, because there's not as much in-person interaction anymore. You know, you have stuff like FaceTime and Zoom and all that other stuff, but you're not seeing people face to face anymore. You lose track of some friends. Some people are get busy. Some people get caught up in their own little world and you just become more of a lonely person in general. Can't hang out with anyone. And it just gets, it gets tough sometimes. I would say that I definitely did feel loneliness during this lockdown, obviously. But at the same time, I didn't feel completely loneliness as I was in contact with my friends online and I would see them around a few times a week. Initially, I did feel lonely as the stress of school and the repetitiveness of texts and friends to keep in touch and remain entertained began to weigh on me. But after a while, I got used to and set a routine for myself and had a realisation that I didn't need to stay in touch with my friends 24-7. I feel like it's normal to feel alone to a certain extent. I also don't feel like that's something that you should be ashamed of, you know? But I do feel like it gets unhealthy whenever it becomes your automatic state of mind. So what I mean by this is whenever you're never content by yourself, or maybe when it reaches the point where it starts to affect your emotions or your mental health. So maybe you're depressed or maybe you want to harm yourself because you feel like you're so alone and nobody understands you. I think it's definitely fine for people to feel alone sometimes. It happens, we're all human. Even the richest person in the world could probably feel alone at some point as well. But when you're alone, you tend to overthink a lot. A lot of thoughts start running through your head. And if that escalates a lot, then the situation that you're in could get worse. And it's best to talk to somebody, whether you get a diary, talk to your parents, your family, if you don't want to talk to them, talk to a teacher. If you don't want to talk to them, you can always talk to a friend or someone. I think that's normal to feel lonely. We are, we can be all the time with people. It is good to have one's time to relax, to rest a little bit. It's okay to have your time. But there is a time where where you have to go out, where you have to walk. It is bad for your health when you rest totally rest at home. You don't go out. You stay close in your bed, in your room, without talking to anyone. That's pretty bad. The only way to to solve that out is to talk. It's normal as human beings to feel alone at times, especially at a time of uncertainty. But I think what we need to realize that is we're not alone than we think we are. However, if we do hide those feelings inside inside of us. Instead of accepting and admitting your feelings, you're going to build up your emotions and that can be very bad for your mentality. It's normal to feel alone. Us as human beings, we're programmed to feel that way. If we're not with someone, we want to be with people. You know, we just want to get out there. And even for introverts, sometimes it's nice to, you know, text or have maybe a close friend over every now and then. But after a while, it can start causing problems such as depression, anxiety, and even suicidal thoughts, and those unfortunately are on the rise due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We need to just watch the warning signs and be careful, and know it's not uncommon to feel alone, but too much of it can be very dangerous for you. It depends on your personality. As humans, we need alone time. While it's good to mingle and associate ourselves with others, self-isolation and being alone can lead to depression, higher cholesterol, higher blood pressure, and leads to Alzheimer's disease. 
I feel like it's normal to feel alone sometimes and as if no one understands you. And sometimes it can be a stepping stone into catharsis. However, once the feeling starts to overwhelm you and interfere with daily routine, it may be wise to reach out to others who can help. So I am open to talk about it, um, only if I feel like my story could help somebody else. But if others just means just any and everybody, probably not. Only because for me, that's something sensitive. And that's something that I would share with somebody who I really trusted and who I knew had my, my best interest at heart. Well, well, as I said before, the key is communication. Communication is a key. So yeah, definitely, obviously open to talk because if you communicate, if you tell them what's going on with you, that's the only way to solve it out. There is no other way. Yes, sometimes I'm actually pretty open talking about me feeling isolated or alone or something, mainly to my parents because I trust them more. I don't know other students as well. It's just easier for me to vent to my parents than it is to vent to somebody from my school because sometimes I have a fear that people are going to go talk to other people. They're going to make a whole new situation out of what I said for no reason. So sometimes I would speak to people, like I would speak to my classmates or at least the ones I'm closer with. Yes, I am open to share ideas and hear how other people feel about it because it might help me to cope knowing that others are experiencing the same thing as me. Normally, I do feel comfortable talking about my feelings to my friends and family it's since I trust them, but um, I feel like sometimes my feelings can be too complicated for me to explain, so I'd rather address this to a professional counsellor or do some research on my own. I personally am open to talk about isolation with others as I've built a trusting and healthy relationship with the people closest to me. Therefore, it's much easier to open up. I feel like, um, like I mentioned about Zoom, that my environment had a big, it played a big role um, because I physically was alone. But in the other sense, I feel like I've been in situations where I've been in a group with a group of people and I just felt alone in the sense that I just didn't belong, if that makes sense. Well, my environment hasn't really affected me, no way, because they were, we were, we tried to be all the time united. We understood that this pandemic had feelings on one another, um, uh, on each other. And, Everyone has its feelings about the pandemic, so we have to respect because it's quite a hard situation and everyone has its particular situation. My loneliness really hasn't been getting any worse, but it hasn't gotten any better. I'm at a boarding school and a lot of kids here are probably not going to go back home. I'm not going to go back home for Christmas. So we've all been trying to stick with each other, speak to each other try to make the most out of it. But when I did feel alone alone, it was mostly because of my injury. I had a mild injury, fractured my wrist. It recovers in like four weeks. I'm already on my third week, so I have one more week. And I couldn't join in trainings. Little things that I probably would have appreciated, like opening the door, holding my food, didn't happen after two days because once people realized that it was a quick recovery and it wasn't that big of a deal, they didn't really bother to help me out. So I had to do everything on my own and struggle. I live outside Los Angeles, California, with a population of 4 million people. And you would think that living in a big city, you wouldn't really feel that alone. Sometimes you could be in a sea of people and feel as though you're just in a room by yourself. Everyone's trying to stay away from each other, not go out as much, not talk to one another. And sometimes people can be a lot less friendly and just want to get on with doing what they're doing. That itself can make you feel a lot more isolated and feel as if you've done something wrong in a way that changes your mindset. Especially in the climate we live in in Southern California, there's so much to do and go out and see, you know, a lot of nature activities, you know, going into the city, to the beach, to Disneyland. And now that all that's closed, you can't take advantage of the opportunities you're given living in the area you live in. And it's really difficult 
to try to process everything to say, what do you mean I can't go there now? Everything's closed. And it really affects you in a certain way to make you feel a lot more isolated than you would have ever felt. Definitely, because I've been stuck at home during lockdown for a very long time. So I only had limited to no face-to-face -face contact with my friends. But, you know, like I've, like I've mentioned before, I do, I am still in contact with my friends online and we do meet every week. Recently, I just got two puppies and they are keeping me engaged and taking my mind off of a lot of stressful things. So that's really fun. The shift in my environment from daily school activities and lessons into staying at home 24-7 was a huge leap. It made me feel extremely overwhelmed with family and constant noise. And despite that, I felt alone due to how tasking it was to muster the energy to talk to friends. Yes, absolutely. I've dealt with it in the past before, sometimes over summer, after you get out of school, family members moving away or relationships not working out or just not being able to see my friends as much but you just have to realize it's never permanent and it's always going to be better in the end. I only deal with loneliness by writing a diary, but mostly talking to my parents because I call them a lot or talking to my friends. When you feel isolated and you cannot go out of the room, you don't talk to anyone, it's hard to be understood. But the key was, uh, again, I think that's, as I told you before, I think that's the only key to be able to talk not being afraid, not to be afraid of what you feel, of what the others will think. I think that was a key and that's how I could dealt with loneliness in the past. Contacting my friends is the best way for me to deal with loneliness and other ways for me includes hobbies such as reading, watching films, being creative and also having chats with my family. I just try to reconnect with as many friends as I can, you know, over FaceTime or Snapchat or Instagram, etc. And just try to listen to music, just get on with my day, keep myself busy, and remind myself we're all in this together and one day this will end. I can't believe I'm sharing this, but there was actually a time in my life where I felt lonely because I didn't have a relationship. Um, that's so cringy. <laughs> How I had to deal with that was not by getting a relationship. Um, I actually had to recognize that if I feel like this, then I don't need a relationship. And I also had to just go on a self journey just to not figure out who likes me, but figure out what do I like about myself? Like, who am I? What's my worth? Like, what do I like to do? You know? And like I said, it was a journey. It wasn't something that happened overnight, but it was so worth it in order to reach where I am now where I can truly say that I'm content in my own company, whether I have a relationship or not. I have a lot of stuff and activities that I enjoy, such as listening to music, playing with my puppies, and dancing. Once I figured out ways to get some alone time, I started to feel less overwhelmed and more at peace. And the feeling of loneliness starts to fade as well. Tackling the issue first. Possibly look out for other people. Having empathy and awareness of what's going on in the world, knowing what the problems are, trying to help people, being generous, being kind. By actively separating ourselves from social media sometimes and recognizing when we feel overwhelmed and practicing removing ourselves from sad situations. Little things like that can slowly build confidence and allow us to find comfort in our own presence. We all just need to get together, whether it be FaceTime or Instagram or Snapchat. We just need to all the need to come together and realize that we're all in this together. We're not alone because we have each other and we're all feeling the same thing. To get themselves involved in activities that they enjoy and to socialize with loved ones. Understanding other people, that's the key to to overcome this, this terrible situation that we are going through. Yes, it's definitely better to meet people in person and talk it out because that's what we're biologically designed to do. But without the means to do so, I think doing it virtually is the next best thing. We just need to constantly keep in contact with one another and make sure that no one's left, you know, feeling out or too lonely to where 
they might start thinking harmful things about themselves or the world around them. We need to all come together and build a community as one people, realizing we're never in this alone. There are many people here who are definitely really shy. I'm a very shy person. A lot of people don't realize it. They think I'm a confident person. I'm really not. I struggle to talk to people sometimes. And I prefer if somebody talks to me rather than me going to them. And I feel like that's something that some people who do have the confidence should do. They should look out for those who look like they're alone, whether it's in the dining hall, in class, and they're really quiet, you know, just give them, not really a heads up, but just ask them how their day was, try to start a little conversation. Like you don't need to have a full long conversation with somebody, but you, it, it, it won't hurt to talk to them a little bit. I do think that we as a younger generation has already dealt with loneliness by using social media to interact with new different people all across the world and yeah it has definitely changed the way we interact with people it, whether it's real life or online but I do think that it would be lovely if we meet some new people um, face to face you know people who would match with us if that makes sense uh, instead of relying too much on social media. Why are you lonely? Like, what, what makes you feel that way? What triggers that feeling? Um, because loneliness is so complex, which makes it difficult just to give one solution. Um, but once you do discover why or what makes you lonely, then speak out about it. Get the help that you need. Don't be ashamed, you know? Like, the reason why you can go on Google and you can search loneliness is because somebody else has felt how you feel. The reason why we're making this video is because somebody has felt like you feel. So yeah, in other words, what I'm saying is to overcome the consequence, don't even allow it to get to the point where a consequence is the option. And that is a wrap for today's video. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end. If you found something of particular value or particularly insightful, I would definitely love to invite you to comment down below your thoughts. In the description box, I've inserted a few links towards the things that my friends are getting up to from this video. Definitely follow them up. Definitely check up upon what they're getting up to and the incredible things that they have and for the future. Once again, I really want to thank all the participants in this video. I understand this was a lot to ask and I'm incredibly grateful that you were able to ultimately be the mouthpiece of this video. Until the next video, goodbye and God bless y'all.